Hello friends, Susan Byington here. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I would love to share my creativity with you and help you grow as a stamper. The card I want to feature today is from the Honey Bee Stamp Set and Detailed Dies. This is something that is retiring from our current catalog and by June, I want to say 3rd, it will be gone forever. Sometimes they actually sell, sell out a little bit sooner. So if this is on your wish list, I would definitely order it right away. Do not wait. I'm happy to take your orders at smilesacrossthemiles.stampinup.net. You can also contact me through there if you prefer to do that. And I will get back with you and I can do an email order or process it any way you would like. Okay, the stamp set that I'm using is the Honey Bee Stamp Set. You can see that, so sweet, so sweet. And the detailed bee dies. Now these dies have all kinds of really sweet little images in it, including the flower, but we're not gonna use the flower today. The ones I'm gonna use today are the hive, the whole hive, the honeycombs, and the small bee. All right, so I've done a lot of the cutting ahead of time so that you don't have to watch me big shot. Um, Stampin' Up! is coming out with a brand new die cutting machine uh, which will be available shortly. It's not going to be available for the premiere of the catalog on June the 4th but hopefully within the next month or two we should be able to see that. Now I'm starting with a black base for this card because you know it's bees, right? So I've got five and a half by eight and a half. It's scored at four and a quarter, and I'm just gonna fold it. Make sure the bottom edges are lined up when you do that, and then you can run your bone folder over it to burnish those edges. And we do that because it's a whole lot easier to adhere things to something that's laying flat. If I didn't do that and it was standing up like this, it's a lot harder to get something to stick to it and be straight. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring in my gold piece so that you can see that I have already pre-cut these little honeycomb pieces out of it. And that is actually a really smart way to conserve your paper because I cut them all out of the center so that I can do this and glue my card together, and nobody's going to be any the wiser that there are holes in there. But I have used almost as much usable paper as I can from there and in so doing that I've saved myself a little bit of money and this is the way it comes out and I literally just take my fingers like this and just or a pokey tool of some kind I wouldn't use a scissors because you're gonna make little dents in your beautiful foil but just they just fall right out of there Isn't that beautiful and then I have all of these pretty little hexagons to do something else with on another card. Well, we're going to use some of them today. All right, so I am going to use my liquid glue, which is my glue of choice because it holds so well and it's forgiving enough that if I don't have something straight, I can reposition it before that glue dries. You don't want to get too close to your edge and you want to keep your bead relatively thin better to have a couple thin beads than one thick one. The thick one can squish out and it can also show sometimes. So you don't want it to do that either. Okay. Um, oh wait. Have to think clearly. This goes on to the card base. Because we have to have a gold border popping out, right? All right, I'm gonna scooch it down just a little bit. Oh, it looks funny right now, doesn't it? <laughs> it's gonna look great in just a second because now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna glow right over the top of it. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of extra. Normally I say stick to the edges, but because I'm gluing to foil, I gave it just a little bit of thin extra in the center. Now these pieces are all cut a quarter inch different. So my base is five and a half by four and a quarter. 
Then the next layer is five and a quarter by four. And then the next layer is five by three and three quarters. That's the easiest way, especially if you're a beginner stamper, I highly recommend that's the easiest way to work with your cards. Now this is where this is gonna get kind of fun because I have to kind of put the puzzle together, so to speak. All right, so I did this on my other one so I know it's doable. See if I can position it the same so that I can get, uh, let's put those pieces together. Okay, that'll fit right there. That's a puzzle piece right there. All right, so if I do that, that's a puzzle piece. And then this one, I want it to fit into the puzzle as well. Here, no, I went out. Let's go like that. It's gonna hang over the edge a little, but that's all right. Now. I can turn it just a bit. Okay, so now that I know how it's gonna to go together, okay, I got little fuzzies going all around, don't I? All right, I am gonna start with this one, and I'm just gonna put little dabs of glue, dot, 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 not a lot. This is, I'm hoping I can put this together for you without messing it up. You want to be really careful not to get glue on the foil portion because it is almost impossible to get off when you're using foil. And you don't have to be everywhere and just little dot, dot, dots. You can see I'm kind of sticking here. Okay, so I was about like this. Yeah, I played with this sample for a long time to figure out where I wanted my combs to land. All right, now this one I put, is it here? Nope, goes up higher. Here. All right, so we're going to land this part here. So I just got to remember where it is I'm sticking it together. Again, just little dots of glue, not real thick, if you do get one that's thicker, just take the tip of the glue and spread it around. If it's really bad, take a piece of scrap paper and just wipe it away. All right, hoping that's enough. And this was the spot where I stuck it together. Like that. Isn't that cool? Just like a puzzle. And I'm really bad at puzzles, but this is adorable. I love this card. So much fun. Again, this is going away. So uh, after the end of May, you will no longer be able to get this particular card. Now I can go like this, or I can hang it over the edge. Hmm. I think I'll go with this one. Okay, so this is the part where I'm sticking it together. I'm just gonna keep my finger there so I know. Honestly, this is the hardest part of the card is putting these little pieces together and then just deciding which ones I wanna pop up. Because then I'm gonna take those little hexagons that came out and I'm gonna put a few of them back in there. And I don't have a set pattern I think this is where I was. Let's get that right in there. You kind of want to land it in the right spot to begin with because if you move it around, you're going to get glue spots. And with this very fine detailed honeycomb that's gold, there's no way that you're going to clean it up efficiently. Now I can take the edge of this little pokey tool and get rid of those strays. I can do that. All right, now... I misplaced my dimensionals. Where did they go? There they are. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some of these and I wanna pop them up. Um, I was gonna go ahead and do this for you, but in the interest of time, I did go ahead and stamp the honeycomb in crushed curry 
and die cut it out. I'm going to take this cute little hello. I got it right on the line there. There's no way of knowing if I can do that again. But we're going to try. Nah, not quite on the line, but it'll work. I really love it on the line. But I didn't practice it to see exactly where it needed to land. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where this is going to go. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put it on before I put my honeycombs on. And you know what? I'm going to run out of dimensionals. I have used up so many of them lately. I'm going to have to grab some more. Which means I'm going to have to walk away. And you can do the hum the Jeopardy song. Do, 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 while I do it. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put that there and I'm going to get a few more dimensionals because I am running out of them. All right, I also have mini dimensionals and I'm going to use those because, well, they were the first thing I grabbed. Okay, so I want to glue some of these in flat and I'm just going to stick one there. stuck to my finger. Okay, put that little guy in there. And then I'll pop some of them up. So let's maybe do this one flat. I'm trying to copy what I did the first time. It may or may not be the same. So I love anytime we have these B sets. I think they're just so adorably cute. Just adorable. I'm so sad that they're retiring this one. Oh, I put it on the Put it on a different, put it on the gold this time. Not sure if I should have done that, but I did. All right, let's put another one here. It's easier if you put it on the black. It's a lot easier to stick it down. There you go. And you don't have to pop them up if you don't want to. I just thought it was a little more fun and interesting to have some of them popping up. I've seen some gorgeous cards done uh, with it flat and not filling any of them in, too. Okay, let's put some in there. Because these are all combs that are filled with lovely, shiny honey. Hmm. Oh, I think I can get that one in there. I can't. All right, let's try one over here. Yeah, this is taking a little while. I am glad that I didn't take the time to do the cut and die in front of you because this video might get a little long. I'm sorry, but hopefully you uh, get kind of inspired watching it. Let's put one there. And if you do not currently have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love the honor of becoming your demonstrator. I offer classes and online tutorials, and these videos are new to me. Um, something I had in mind anyway, but it's kind of forced my hand with the COVID virus situation, making it a little more critical. All right, let's put some on now with dimensionals. And I'm using our, our mini dimensionals fit absolutely perfect under there. So I'm going to pop this one on here. See, it just gives so, it just adds so much to it when you put those on. I dropped that one. Let's try again. Ah yes, thinking ahead, I would have stuck dimensionals on here before we started. Yeah. Well, you can't always have things work out perfectly, right? Let's see, I think I'll put one here. Just trying to make my fill look random. Do, 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 do. I feel like we should be singing songs or something. You know, a lot of times when I stamp, though, I have absolutely no sound going on in the background. 
um, especially if I'm creating tutorials or typing or something. I don't know. If I'm just randomly cutting paper, I'll usually watch old TV like Dick Van Dyke or I Dream a Genie or something maybe Disney. Lately I've been watching the Jack Hanna nature videos. Those have been a lot of fun. All right. We are getting close to the end, I think. Let's put one here. Hmm, how's that look? Let's maybe do another one here. All right, we're gonna put it like that. We're gonna see how that goes. I've already done my bees. And I'm going to use a Mango Melody uh, Stampin' Blends marker just to color in the bee body. And it's a little darker than some yellows, but it's nice because I don't have to do multiple layers. Just a quick stripe and it's done. And I am using the finer tip because I felt like I would have a little more control with my bee. Oops. All right. And I put three on the outside, but you know, I felt like I wanted a bee for the inside too. All right. And of course, anytime you're doing something with wings, it's always nice to put a little wink of Stella on them gives them that iridescent quality that they would have in nature when you see wings. They're so sheer and they reflect all the light. Okay, and this Wink of Stella is running dry. I have probably half a dozen of these and I can't for the life of me find the new ones. All I have are the old ones that are drying up. All right, so I'm setting that over there these are going to get a dimensional on the back, and they are big enough for a big dimensional. I'm going to do three of them, like that. Now, some people would say, okay, that's all. You use them up. Absolutely not. You tear all these little scraps off. You use every single bit. You never want to waste. Stampers are usually really good at being extremely frugal. <laughs> we keep scraps and cut out the center of our expensive foils and just try to be really, really frugal. All right. Here is my little bee on the front. Okay, and that is actually the longest part of assembly. Now I'm going to do the inside. And although I did my and my honeycomb out of white, I'm doing my inside from Very Vanilla. And I'm going to pull in my Stamparatus for this because it is the only way that I'm going to get it perfectly beautifully lined up. So I am going to stamp my sentiment in Crushed Curry. So if you can see me over here doing this, I'm just tapping the sentiment. I've already pre-positioned it so I know right where I want it to be and it really helps if I put the paper in, doesn't it? Nah. That's my scrap I was testing on. All right. I'm going to give it a good solid push. Pretty good. I'm going to do it one more time and make sure all the ink came off there. Awesome. Now, it ha comes with two plates, so I'm just going to pull that one off. Sorry, bumped the camera. Put this one on, and this one I'm going to ink up in Memento, Tuxedo Memento Black. Okay, I want to make sure the leaves are covered, but I don't want to do overkill. So I'm doing some tapping, and I'm off camera here. I'm kind of looking really carefully. Now, when I do this, they should perfectly land right around my sentiment. Yay! Oh, good. I thought that was a spot. It was a crumb. Look how pretty that is and how fast and easy. This is a great tool to use, especially if you are doing quantities of things. 
um, you can snap it out in a heartbeat. And then of course I want to color my flowers a little bit with that same yellow. They don't have to be perfect. Just drawing the lines very gently. Little tiny flower here. I left the leaves black because we're going with a black and gold theme here. Like so. All right. And I got just a little out of the lines up here. It's not really a big deal, but because I can show you how easy it is to fix it, I just take my color lifter and I like to use the small end. I have a lot more control and I just tap it. I don't rub it, I don't try to push it in, just tapping. And look, it's completely disappearing. By the time that's dry, you won't even see it in there anymore. All right, so I'm now gonna stick this on the inside of my card. like so. This again is giving it a quarter inch border. It's five and a quarter by four. And I have another B to put on the inside. Now I'm not going to put him on a dimensional because I don't want him to pop up quite that much. But I am going to stick him on with a couple of glue dots. And I stacked them, which will make him a little bit deeper so he's off the page but he's not quite as thick as um, a dimensional wood. Now I just want to add a little more shimmer here. Look at those flowers. Look how they pop. Just a little bit, a little bit there and I think I'm going to add to his wings just a little and then I think I am going to put a little on my hive, look how pretty that is. I should have done it before I put my B on it, but I'm just like drawing lines, like it's a marker. Mm -hmm. Oh, should I do the bottom? I think no. I think I'll leave it. On my sample, I had the bottom done too, but I think I'm just gonna color in the lines. I really like how that looks. I love this card. I think it is so, so pretty. This is one of the projects that I do for my stamp clubs. And if you would like to place an order for these products, I would love the opportunity to be your demonstrator. You can go to smilesacrossthemile.stampinup.net any time of the day. You can also contact me there. And you can go to my Facebook group, Sending Smiles Across the Miles with Susan Byington. And there I am going to share lots more ideas and tips. And it is a growing group just getting started. So you would get in kind of at the ground floor and you haven't missed a lot of anything that's been happening yet. I will make announcements there and I will also be premiering the new catalog there in June. So please hit the like button, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Let me know you were here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were inspired. Make a card and send someone a smile today. Bye.